Hello and welcome everyone to FlowServe's Destination Innovation Virtual Experience. I will be your host, Hugo Castrejon, a senior training specialist within FlowServe's Aftermarket Services and Solutions Group. I began my FlowServe career within groundwater development and water resources, primarily focusing on vertical turbine pump and submersible applications before joining the power generation group. There I expanded my focus to include large multi-stage between bearing pumps. And now I look to impart that pump knowledge and industry experience to trainees. I have enjoyed being a trainer over the past couple years and I am honored to be hosting this virtual training today. And I will be introducing the topic of using valve throttling versus speed control. In order to discuss the difference between throttling and speed control for direct pump operation, two topics must first be introduced, namely total dynamic head and the pump system. Only then can the potential savings from speed control be understood. So let's talk about the total dynamic head, or TDH for short, produced by a pump. TDH is the equivalent height that a pump would discharge a process stream above Earth's surface. So visualize that a pump produces a thousand units of head. That means the pump could discharge a process fluid 1,000 meters or feet, respective of your customary units, into the sky. Mathematically, using Bernoulli's principle, this equates to the total head downstream of the pump minus the total head upstream of the pump, or everything contained within the red rectangle, representing Bernoulli's principle, would equal 1,000 meters or feet. Looking at a relatively simple system, the downstream portion highlighted will have a certain amount of pressure, frictional velocity, and elevation for the pump to overcome. Similarly, the upstream side will have a certain pressure, frictional velocity, and elevation to be endured by the pump. Subtracting the discharge components less the suction components will provide the TDH produced by the pump as seen by its characteristic performance curve. Here, five points of operation were chosen from pump shutoff to end of curve in order to provide a graphical representation of TDH. Now the duty point, or often referred to as a design point, is a point of intersection where the pump performance and system curves meet. Here, the triangle highlights the point of intersection between the two curves, marking the pump duty point. A deeper dive into the system will help to understand how excessive throttling restricts pump system longevity. So the pump system is anything that ties the suction source being drawn from to the delivery source being discharged into. This includes piping runs of specific hydraulic diameter, valves, strainers, and fittings. Each component within the pump system will carry a certain amount of differential pressure, elevation, and friction to be overcome in order to induce flow. So say the pump performance is characterized by the black curve and the system curve is given in red. If the discharge control valve is throttled to 50% open, then the friction required would increase and the pump would operate farther back on its curve as represented by the hatched line. If throttling is excessive, there may be a tremendous amount of wasted energy manifesting as damage to the pump and its system. A worthwhile alternative to excessive throttling is to implement a means to control pump running speed. Applied properly, variable speed control 
can promote energy savings and reduce carbon footprint. Moreover, by limiting the damage to equipment, speed control can also reduce maintenance costs and production costs associated with downtime. For example, throttling on the discharge side of the pump would push the point of operation away from the rated point and farther back on the performance curve to a lower flow condition. This is represented by the part load throttling star. If any excess head were throttled downstream of the pump to achieve the part load operating point given by the red star, then the pump may cavitate excessively, experience internal recirculation, or any other mode of excessive wear and tear. So a better option may be to slow the pump running speed to achieve a part load operating point with no to little throttling necessary. This would save the energy highlighted in yellow from becoming a destructive force against the pump, its seal, and the accompanying system. As a training specialist, I can assure you that there are a host of curriculums that further flesh out the nuances of pump and system interaction, let alone how to achieve the best results from installed equipment. These courses can be found online at academy.flowserve.com or you may consult your local salesman for any enrollment questions you have. For any questions into site-specific situations, please email me at the FlowServe email provided. Thank you.